Test. Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be solving leak code problem 729, My Calendar 1. Before we get into the question prompt, just want to remind you guys, leave a like and a comment really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and a subscription really helps the channel grow. All right, you are implementing a program to use your calendar. We can add a new event if adding the event will not cause a double booking. A double booking happens when two events have the same non-empty intersection, i.e. some moment is common to both events. The event can be represented as a pair of integers start and end that represents a booking on the half open interval start to end, where start is inclusive and end isn't. The range of real numbers such that x, um, let's see, x is greater than or equal to start and less than end. Uh, we want to implement the my calendar class, which uh, my calendar will simply initialize the object, and we'll have a method book which takes a start and an end time, and will return true if the event can be added to the calendar successfully without causing a double booking. Otherwise, return false and do not add the event to the calendar. Okay, now that we understand what we want to do, let's wipe away some of this text here because it takes up a lot of screen real estate and let's look in a basic example. So we read the question prompt, now let's look at an example. We know that the first argument is always going to be to basically instantiate the calendar. So we don't really have to do anything here, we're good to go. The next thing we want to do is book and we want to book the time from 10 to basically 20, right? Where well, remember the start is inclusive and the end is exclusive, right? Cool, so we book that, and then we need to see whether or not we can actually uh, book the next one. So from the first one, we would return true because we can book it. And then for the next one, we wanna book the slot 15 to 25, right? So unfortunately, 15 to 25 is within this interval, right? And obviously because 15 is between 10 and 20, uh, so that is an issue. So we have a conflict here, so we can't actually book this meeting, so we're gonna say false. So we're not able to actually book this meeting. So this one is not actually added to the calendar. Then we uh, want to add, you know, 20 to 30. So let's see what we can do. So 20 to 30, where 30 is not inclusive, but 20 is. So obviously since a meeting ends at 20, we can actually have a booking which starts at that same time because remember the endpoint is not inclusive. So we can actually add this meeting. So in our like global meetings array or whatever, however we're gonna store this, uh, we would have this meeting as well. So we can actually make this booking. Now, doing this on paper is really simple and translating to code actually isn't that bad. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we are essentially going to store these values uh, in an array, right? So we're gonna store them in you know our bookings. So we'll call it bookings and we will store it in an array and we'll basically store the start and the end time for uh, each booking, right? 20 to 30, right? So what we wanna do when we add, wanna add a new booking is we have to figure out uh, where we would insert this booking in terms of like this order. And what you'll notice is that these bookings are actually sorted. So they happen basically in chronological order and we know that they're always gonna be from, you know, they're gonna be increasing as we go um, because that's just how time works, right? If there's an intersection, we don't insert it. And then obviously ones that come after will go after and ones that come before a certain one will get inserted before. So this kind of gives us a hint of what we need to do, right? We need to insert something into this list and we also need to figure out where to insert it. And because it's a sorted list, we can actually make use of binary search here, right? So we can do a binary search to figure out where in this list we'd want to insert it in terms of like uh, respecting the start and the end time. So that would be the first step. And then we need to check for an intersection, right? So check for um, intersection, right? So we're gonna check for an intersection and we just wanna make sure that there's no overlap in the interval. If there is, uh, so if there's an intersection, then we return false, right? Because we can't book that meeting and therefore it's not possible, right? If there's no intersection, then we wanna return true um, because we can book the meeting. And remember that actually before we return true, we need to insert the interval, right? So we're gonna insert um, the meeting. Insert the meeting because we were able to book it and then we can actually uh, return true. 
So that's the general intuition of how we want to solve this, right? We're going to have our bookings array here. We're going to be storing each element, start and end. And then when we want to add a new element, we're going to binary search for where we would insert it because we can do that. Remember, because it's a sorted array and we'll search for the insert position. We'll check if there's an intersection. If there is an intersection, we'll simply return false. If there's no intersection, we'll return true after inserting the meeting. And then we continue on to the next uh, meeting that we're asked to process. So that being said, what we should do now is we should actually go to the code editor and type this up. There's only really one uh, method we need to implement here. It is the book meeting. Obviously, the my calendar, we're just going to be instantiating this uh, list here. We don't have to do anything there. The book is where the actual binary search will happen. So enough talking. Let's go to the code editor and actually type this up. Back in the code editor, let's type this up. Remember that for the init function, all we need to do is just set up the calendar variable, which is just going to be a list to hold our results. So we're going to say self.calendar equals an empty list. Now let's implement the book function, which is um, where we need to actually perform that binary search. So let's now set up our binary search variables. So let's actually say left equals zero and right equals the length of self dot calendar. Um, and there we go. OK, so now we want to perform our binary search. And remember, we're not actually looking for a value here. We're just looking to move our pointers down uh, to basically find that proper insert place. So we're going to say while left is actually less than right. And we use less than right here and not equal less than or equal to because remember, we're not actually looking for a value. We're just looking to move the pointers down. And typically when you're moving the pointers down, you do left less than right. Uh, and then if you were to actually look for a value, it's left less than or equal to right. So uh, standard with any binary search, let's calculate the midpoint. This is going to be left plus right uh, divide by two. And now what we want to do is we essentially want to figure out whether or not we want to move our point up. So we're going to say if self.calendar of the mid of zero. So basically, if the start of whatever the midpoint falls at is actually less than or equal to uh, start. So start, remember, is here. So if the start point of our meeting is actually less than or equal to uh, the start, then what we want to do is we actually want to say I oh sorry, um, left equals mid plus one because we were too far left in our um, insertion, right? We want to be inserting it, I guess, to the right of our meeting. So if it's too small, that means that the left side of the array, we don't need to search anymore. So we can actually move our left pointer up to mid plus one. So we're basically cutting out that left side of the array because we want to insert uh, basically at the end of an interval, not at the beginning. So otherwise, uh, if this is not the case, so obviously if self.calendar mid of zero, basically the start is actually greater than our start value, then what we want to do is actually say that um, right is now going to be equal to mid. So this binary search will run and eventually we will break because left is no longer less than right. And now it's actually time to figure out uh, whether or not we have an intersection here. So we're going to say if self dot intersects. So we're going to pass in what we're going to pass in, um, you know, the, the index where we're currently at. So we're going to pass in left and we're going to pass in basically the interval, right? So we're going to pass in the start and the end. So we need to check that interval. Uh, so if there's an intersection, we can simply return false, right? And we'll implement the intersects function in a second. And if there's no uh, intersection, then let's add an else clause here and we can say self.calendar dot insert. So we can insert our interval because if there's no intersection, we can safely insert it at the point. Um, and basically we want to insert it at index I and we want to insert basically start and end here. So essentially, uh, if you think about it, what we're doing is we want to find the, I guess, the point after um, where we would insert. So basically, if there's no intersection, then we want basically the, the smallest possible place we can insert, right? So this is what the binary search is essentially trying to get us to do. And if there's no intersection, we're just going to insert it at that index. Oops, sorry, this shouldn't be I, sorry, it should be L. Uh, when I did this originally, I used I and J. 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna insert it at that left pointer and we're good to go. So uh, the last thing we would need to do here is just return true. Now let's simply just write the, is, uh, the intersection function. So we're gonna say def intersects uh, self. So this is gonna take an index and this is going to take the start and the end. So now what we need to do is just check uh, whether or not there's actually any overlap between those two intervals. So we're going to return uh, whether or not self dot calendar. So remember that the ith index is where we want to insert. So that means that we need to check the index minus of I, idx minus one to see if there's any uh, intersection, right? So we're going to say idx minus one of one. So if the uh, endpoint of the previous interval is actually greater than start, um, if, you know, assuming, uh, so, okay. So obviously IDX needs to be greater than one uh, for this to work, because obviously then we'll be checking the end of the array because Python lets you go backwards. So we only want to make this check uh, if um, IDX is actually greater than or equal to one. Otherwise, we just return false here because if it's um, if it's the first element in the array, obviously there's no intersection. We don't have to worry about anything there. Uh, other or so this checks essentially the um, the you know the start, and then we want to also check the end. So or we can have an intersection on the other side. So actually, this should be. Um, let's see if I can't clean this up. I think I'm messed up here. I think I'm missing a parentheses. Yeah, these close each other and these close each other. Okay, cool. I don't know how that one got lost, but anyway, uh, now we're going to basically check the end. So we're going to say self.calendar of our current index is um, if its start is actually less than the end, um, then what we want to do. So if we also need to check the boundary here. So if I is actually less than length of self dot calendar because remember we don't want to be checking the uh, wrong index here um, when it comes to this because obviously we don't want to go over the bounds so we just want to check that i is actually less than the length of self dot calendar uh, otherwise we're just going to return false here so if the boundaries are fine in terms of inserting uh, our interval then we're good to go and we can simply return uh, true from here uh, if there's an intersection otherwise we're going to return false so that is your intersects function. Now let's actually run this to make sure it uh, works. Hopefully I didn't make a syntax error. And I, okay, crap, I keep calling it I, it should be IDX, whoops. Um, let's see if that fixes it. Okay, cool, it seems to be all right. Let's see if that is submitted. Okay, cool, accept it, nice. All right, so let's now go back to the uh, editor here and let's talk about the uh, time and space complexity. So Time complexity wise, obviously we have our book function. So what is this gonna do? So we have a binary search here, which is going to run obviously in big O of log n time as binary searches do. Then we have the intersect function, which is just going to check it in uh, constant time. So nothing to worry about there, but we have this insert that we may need to do. Now we're inserting into a standard list so inserting into a standard list in the worst case is going to be big O of n, uh, which means that the total asymptotic time complexity, this big O of n will dominate, uh, whereas this log n will be uh, secondary. So our time complexity here is going to be uh, big O of n in the time. And you know that's what it is. So space complexity wise, obviously we have the calendar. So we're basically, it's just gonna be big O of n, right? We're storing as many events as we get, and that's just going to be big O of n. Now, in an interview, you might be asked how you can actually improve this. And the best way to improve it would basically be using some sort of data structure where you can insert into it in log n time. So I believe in Python, there is a data structure called a sorted list, which as the name suggests, it's a list that when you insert when you insert into it, it will do it, um, you know, quickly. Uh, and it's essentially behind the scenes implemented as some sort of like a linked list. But for this question, this is fine. This may be just something you want to discuss with your interviewer. Um, obviously, sorted lists, I'm not sure if it's actually part of the standard library. So using third party dependencies, uh, probably not something that you're going to probably do in a LeetCode interview. But just know that 
if you had a data structure that was uh, able for you to actually insert it in constant time or log n time, um, then you could improve your uh, time complexity here. So that is just something to keep in mind. Your interviewer may ask you that as a follow up. Hopefully they don't actually ask you to implement a sorted list on your own because oof, that's going to be tricky. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. That's how you solve my calendar one. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. If you want to join a Discord community with like-minded people to discuss all things Fang, interview prep, resume chat, um, getting referrals, all that stuff, join the Discord. I'll leave a link in the description below, and I hope to see you there. All right, that's enough talking. Thanks you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.